Okay, so we have a question here. We're here at the Live of Five and we have a question from one of our community members, Jess, here in the Irish Pagan School. So Jess, do you want to come on and ask your question? Uh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so my question was, um, how do you feel about um, folks uh, trying to substitute um, plants uh, that are considered sacred uh, to uh, the Irish tradition um, for more local plants. Um, as someone who's an American, um, I don't have access to uh, uh, indigenous sacred plants. So, um, so that's one part of that question. The other is, um, how do you feel about folks uh, trying to uh, bring uh, uh, Irish plants um, to other countries? as a way to um, have those plants um, in our countries. Hmm. Okay, so first, first off, um, when you are, and I'm presuming that you're talking in an Irish pagan context here, so people feel that the, the native plants of Ireland are sacred and they have the folklore and the traditions around them. So in that case, I, my advice would actually be exactly the same, right? So you don't have to physically have a plant in your hand to get to know it as an ally or to get to know the spirit of the plant or to build a relationship with the plant you don't actually physically have to have it in front of you you know like we're we're pagans we <laughs> we believe in magic and spirit and energy and stuff like that so um you can absolutely wherever you are in the world you can build relationship with the spirit of any native irish plant to um to deepen your practice or to, you know, de um, develop it as an ally or, or become its ally, right, in the world, because it's not always about what you're getting from it, you can also give. So that would be the first thing that I would kind of put a gentle reminder out. Um, if you do want to use, um, if you want to bring in like um, medicinal aspects or, um, you know, or magical aspects of a native plant and, you know, in a case where you would need to have it, it physically or a substitute, which is, I believe, where your question is coming from. Um, I would say always start there first anyway in developing that relationship with the plant, right? So that's always going to be your first port of call. Secondly, though, um, the more you know about that plant, the, and also then kind of side by side with that, the more you know about your native environment, right? So those would be two kind of learning projects, right? Um, particularly, um, if you have a history or a heritage of the native people of the land that you live on and what plants they use and for what. So, so those would be two kind of um, two paths of learning and research to go down. And over time, what you're going to see is that there are certain plants that will ally with each other from your native region and from Ireland. And they might not be the same plant, but they will have maybe similar magical properties, similar energetic properties, be used for similar things medicinally, you know? And the more you know, the more you're going to see those, um, those sympathetic alliances between, you know, plants of different cultures and different traditions, right? So I would always be very hesitant about just doing something as a straight swap that seems to make sense because the more you know about a plant, the more you're going to find that like, plants are tricksy. You're, you're going to find that there's so much you don't know, right? Um, I have plant, uh, plant allies that I've worked with um, my whole life, and I still learn things about them every time, you know, every time I, I go into communication with them. Um, so, you know, so, so those are all really important things. And I know I just keep, every time anybody asks me a question, I just keep adding more workload to you, right? It's <laughs> never simple. <laughs> okay, but I'm not going to apologize for that because this stuff isn't simple. You know, like there, we've lost so much of our ancestral heritage, our ancestral knowledge, and it's up to us to, to really put in the work and put in the effort to actually get that back, right? So you need to be in right relationship with the native plants of Ireland, but you also need to be in right relationship with what's happening locally as much as you can be, you know? So when you are, and like that goes for your diet and everything as well, you know, and there's, there's, there's a whole, like we are not separate from these plants. We are not separate from our environment. Um, any of us who work in, in a pagan tradition or an earth-based, I mean, the, you know, the clue is in the name, earth-based spirituality. Everything is connected. Everything is interconnected. And that includes plants from traditional from different traditions and from different cultures they, they will have connections and um, because when you you know when you go 
deep down into the roots, everything is connected somewhere along the way, right? So it is up to you to actually do that work and to find that. And for the second part of your question, so hopefully that answered the first um, by giving you more homework. But for the second part of your question, um, I, I feel that it's absolutely fine um, for people to ethically source native Irish plants. Um, and I'm going to give you a great resource for doing that. It's uh, seedsavers.ie in, um, in a place called Scariff in County Clare. And they run the Celt project down there and it's an amazing place to visit. Um, it's in East Clare. If anybody is interested, maybe John might put that in the chat or somebody might. Uh, so seedsavers.ie because they, um, they run our, her well, one of our heritage seed banks and you can join them uh, with a membership. So you're by supporting them, you're supporting their research, you're supporting the work that they do, you're support, you know, you're, you're contributing. So again, it's this idea of cultural appropriation versus cultural appreciation, right? So you are actually contributing back to the native, the native people who are doing this work, right? By going to somewhere like Seed Savers um, and, you know, buying their seeds from them, buying their products from them. But also then, like I said, you know, you can join the membership, you can join the Facebook page, you can start to um, engage with their community and help to build them up and share them and all the rest of it, right? So that would be that part. Um, what I would really 100% absolutely disagree with, and nobody is going to be surprised if you've been around me for five minutes, um, would be anybody taking anything from, you know, a visit to Ireland and bringing it home. So digging a plant up or anything like that. And I know that's not what you meant, Jess, but I'm just going to throw that out there because you would be, well, maybe you wouldn't be, but many people are shocked by, you know, I worked for over a decade as a tour guide and um, the amount of people that I see with plants sticking out of their pot, like whole plants just sticking out of their pocket that they've, you know, just dug up while we're just walking around. And it's like, do you even know, like, is that a rare plant? Is that a protected plant? Is it endangered? No, just look pretty. I thought I'd have something from Ireland that I can just bring home and I'm going to put it into like a bag with water and seal it up and it'll go in my suitcase. I'm like, A, it's going to be fucking dead by the time you get that back to Arizona, you dope. Um, but B, um, <laughs> but B, like, you know, you have absolutely no context for what you've just done. You've just like appropriated out of the natural environment there, like literally. So, Obviously, nobody wants to do that, right? Um, but when it comes to, again, like I said, that, that ethical relationship and um, being able to ethically source plants, there's absolutely no reason why you wouldn't, um, you know, see if you can grow and nurture those plant spirits in your own environment with the proviso that you make sure that what you're growing is not going to be a danger to your own natural environment so again there's going to be research you either keep it as a house plant and keep it inside and make sure it doesn't get you know it's it's, it's a declawed cat from that point on basically right or you make damn sure that it's not a threat in your native environment and unfortunately the like if it's something that you can't find in your native environment or that doesn't grow there then there is a very real danger that it is it could turn out to be a threat because you know there's things that we have grown wild here that um that are a threat in in america um oh somebody told me rowan i'm not sure if that's true um but you know ivy would be one um like english ivy or irish ivy would um now it is a problem here as well but um i've heard that like there's whole kind of states where it's like it's 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 just a complete danger because it just takes over everything you know um so there's there's a lot of conditions on your question and i hope that i've kind of there's probably more that i haven't even thought of but those would be the, the main things that are coming to my mind and as with anything you really need to know what you're doing you know and and i mean that from a, a biodiversity point of view but also from a um you know an energetic magical a spiritual point of view and just to kind of bring it back a bit, like there is absolutely nothing stopping anybody from developing a relationship with a native Irish plant, you know, through other world journeying or, um, you know, non, non corporeal communication in whatever way that or whatever method that, um, that looks. So, um, so we're going to finish up the recording there. And if anybody wants to join our live at five sessions, um, 
you can get on our mailing list and we send them out we send the invites out on tuesdays thursdays and saturdays on the mailing list um, if you want to join the mailing list and you don't want invitations you can also <laughs> you can untick yourself from that as well so that's all good all right so thank you very much for your time and i will see you in the next video